And now for something completely different. Alex Kubrick writes, Hi, Dr. Wood. I would like to ask you for a favor, and I am sure that you are a great man, and you will accept it just for the sake of your Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of Mary. Can you please make one short video, one little short video, one minute at least, about some great things Muhammad did? I am sure he did great things. Be a human for once. I don't know if Alex is a Muslim, he's a fan of several Muslim channels, but since he asked nicely, and I'm in a giving mood, I'll share three great things Muhammad did. First, Muhammad abolished the practice of female infanticide, the practice of killing female babies because they were regarded as more of a burden than boys. We don't really have any pre-Islamic sources about the extent of female infanticide in Arabia, but it must have happened at least occasionally because it's an issue in the Muslim sources. Many Muslims tend to exaggerate the problems in pre-Islamic Arabia in order to build a case for Islam. We can see this when their explanations contradict each other. A Muslim will tell me that female infanticide was so prevalent that the female population was being wiped out. When I ask the same Muslim why the Quran allows polygamy, he'll tell me that there were so many women in society that each man needed to marry multiple wives because there weren't enough husbands to go around. But inconsistency aside, female infanticide was a huge problem in the Roman Empire. Christians abolished it. So whatever differences we may have with Islam, we can still applaud Muhammad's condemnation of female infanticide. We're on the same page with our Muslim friends on that issue. Second, Muhammad affirmed the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Muhammad had an extremely high view of scripture and of God's ability to preserve it. According to Muhammad, the Jewish and Christian scriptures were revealed by God. They were perfectly preserved by God. Jews and Christians still had the perfectly preserved word of God during the time of Muhammad, and we know what they had because we have copies of our scriptures from before this time and after this time. According to Muhammad, Jews and Christians don't even need the Quran because we have our own scriptures from God. The Quran commands Jews and Christians to judge by our own scriptures, not by the Quran. The Quran says that we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the scriptures that were revealed to us. So, whatever else we disagree with Muhammad on, we can applaud his view of our scriptures. Of course, Muhammad's followers completely ruin this by insisting that even though the Quran consistently affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Bible, it's secretly condemning the Bible and calling it a corrupt book. Muslims don't have nearly as much respect for our scriptures as their prophet did, and as it turns out, they don't have nearly as much respect for their own scriptures as their prophet did. That's why they believe they're allowed to twist and distort the message of the Quran in order to fit their own beliefs and agendas. This contempt not only for our scriptures, but also for their own scriptures stands out because usually Muhammad's followers live far better lives than their prophet did. But on this issue, Muhammad was right on the money while his followers reject what he said, and in the process, they insult God. We can certainly applaud Muhammad, however, for his view of the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Third, even though Muhammad was the most obvious false prophet in history, I like the fact that he gave us everything we need to prove that he was a false prophet. He won followers by robbing caravans and conquering cities and dividing up the spoils with those who fought for him, and by promising them an eternity of deflowering virgins in paradise. But he also gave arguments that were supposed to prove that he was a prophet of God. He claimed that there were prophecies about him in the Bible, and that the Quran is so masterfully written, it must come from God, and that his character is so wonderful, he must have God's approval. In reality, the Bible calls Muhammad a false prophet, the Quran is a dumpster fire of a book, and Muhammad was a train wreck of a human being. By making his main arguments so easy to expose and refute, Muhammad gave us everything we need to prove that he was a false prophet. So, 
These are three great things that Muhammad did. He abolished female infanticide, he affirmed the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, and he gave us everything we need to expose him as a false prophet. In the comments, let me know if there's anything you like about the prophet of Islam. Now, while we're in a generous mood, while we're giving credit where credit is due, let's check out a video I made about my favorite verse in the Quran. Just because I reject the Quran doesn't mean I hate everything about it. In fact, as you're about to see, there are some parts of the Quran that I absolutely love. 